a diabetes diagnosis, the parents or caregivers of the child with diabetes should contact the child's school to inform the school staff of the diagnosis. The diabetes care team is available to help with any questions the school staff might have about their responsibilities related to taking care of the child's diabetes. Children with diabetes have certain legal rights as described in the American with Disabilities Act. Public schools are required by law to train a responsible staff member to assist the child with their diabetes management. If a child attends a private school, accommodations may differ. The child's caregivers are not required to be physically present to manage the child's diabetes during school hours. This is why it is critical to create a diabetes medical management plan, often referred to as a DMMP, and a 504 plan with the child's caregivers and their diabetes care team. If the student already has an Individualized Education Plan, or IEP, we recommend that diabetes be added to the plan. Sometimes an IEP may take the place of a 504 plan. We'll go over these plans in detail shortly. We recommend that three school staff members be trained on the basics of diabetes management. This hands-on training should be provided by a school nurse, a diabetes organization, or the child's primary caregiver. The diabetes care team can assist with providing resources for the training. There are also handouts and information available on our website that can be used for training. The school staff will need to know at least the following pieces of information. The signs and symptoms of high and low blood glucose. When and how to check blood glucose using a glucometer or CGM. Before meals, before gym class or recess, before getting on the bus, before sports, any time there are symptoms of high or low blood glucose or the child is not feeling well. When and how to give an insulin shot or use an insulin pump. How to calculate insulin doses for meals and snacks. Basic carb counting for all school provided food items. How to treat a low blood glucose. When it is necessary to treat a high blood glucose. When and how to check for ketones what to do in the case of unconsciousness or seizure, how to administer emergency glucagon, where the everyday diabetes kit is kept, the student's rights and accommodations related to diabetes, including the DMMP, 504 plan, and or IEP. Videos in this series can help with training school staff on these topics but please allow school staff to ask questions and involve the diabetes care team with any concerns that may come up. The school staff members you may want to educate about T1D include principal, school nurse, guidance counselor, teachers, specials or elective teachers, latchkey or after-school program supervisors, cafeteria staff, coaches or extracurricular supervisors, bus drivers, administrative staff, anyone responsible for the child. T1D tip. Helping your teachers and school staff goes a long way in forming a positive relationship for taking care of diabetes. Some of our patient families have suggested making a poster or letting the child with type 1 give a class presentation if they are comfortable talking about diabetes. A poster can be especially helpful for classrooms that have a lot of volunteers or rotating instructors coming through. If the child is shy, it's still helpful to make a cheat sheet or a T1D basics binder for the school staff to help them remember everything they need to do. Thanks, Rosalie. It's important to remember that school personnel are likely not medical professionals and they may need additional help or explanations of their responsibilities. Depending on the child's age, school staff may be responsible for all the diabetes management that happens at school or only some parts of diabetes care. Toddlers and preschool age children need help with all aspects of diabetes care. Some children in elementary school and middle school may be able to check their blood glucose, but they will need help and supervision from adults to ensure it is being done and done correctly. Middle school and high school students may feel more comfortable handling diabetes care by themselves depending on their maturity level and abilities, but they might still need assistance, particularly in the event of an emergency. Regardless of their age, all children with diabetes will need help at some point to manage the condition, and the school should be prepared to provide that support. 
Establishing a healthy and productive partnership between the school staff and caregivers is the best way to ensure proper diabetes care for the child. There are several plans that should be developed between the caregivers of the student with diabetes and the school staff with the help of the diabetes care team. The first is called a Diabetes Medical Management Plan, or DMMP. A DMMP is completed by the diabetes care team and it contains the medical recommendations for the student's health care and education plans. The plan is reviewed and updated over time when needed. Generally, you should request an updated DMMP from your diabetes care team prior to the start of every school year or if any changes are needed in the student's medical treatment. The second plan is called a Section 504 plan, commonly called 504 plan for short. This plan should be worked on between the student's caregivers and the school staff. The child's diabetes social worker may be available to call into the 504 plan meeting if requested in advance. A 504 plan is a formal, legal action plan made with the child's school that outlines the school's responsibilities in managing your child's diabetes. It ensures the child has the same access to education as their peers without diabetes and is treated fairly. The 504 plan can help reinforce the commitments made in the DMMP. One of the school staff members responsible for taking care of the student's diabetes or the school nurse may draft a document called an Individual Health Plan or IHP for your student based on the material the diabetes care team gives them. An IHP contains the school strategies for carrying out the medical recommendations in the DMMP in the school setting. The school staff member prepares the IHP based on medical orders in the DMMP and reviews it with caregivers and the student. Caregivers can suggest additions to the IHP based on the student's individual diabetes care needs and preferences. As part of the IHP, the school staff member or nurse should also draft an emergency care plan for hypoglycemia and hyperglycemia. These plans should include what to do in the event of hyper and hypoglycemia and where the supplies are kept to treat both conditions. These plans should be distributed to all school staff who are responsible for the student with diabetes during the school day and school-sponsored activities. Based on the DMMP, the emergency care plans provide details about how to recognize and treat hypoglycemia and hyperglycemia and who to contact for help. This concludes our video series about managing type 1 diabetes. We hope that you learned a lot and feel more confident about different aspects of handling type 1. Please reach out to our staff if you have any questions or concerns related to diabetes and check out our website for even more information, advice, and resources to help make your life easier. If you found these videos helpful, please share them with friends, family, or anyone you know who deals with type 1 diabetes.